Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In exercise number two called Simulate App Purchases, we're going to be checking the licensing information for our app dynamically. So uh, we will be listening for any changes. So when the user says, yes, I want to purchase the full version of our app, we want to listen for changes and then update the app appropriately. But good for us. Most of the heavy lifting has already been done in the previous lesson, so this should be extremely short. However, I did skip a step in the previous lesson. We're going to run into a roadblock if we don't implement that. So let's jump into exercise one, task two. And if you scroll down, we implemented this code, which we said that we're using the dispatcher so that it can spin off a thread to go and perform the call and then update the UI as necessary. We forgot to actually capture our instance of the dispatcher for our app. And to do that, we're gonna to need to copy this code in step four and put it into our app.xaml. And I'm gonna put this at the very bottom of our app.xaml.cs. And hey, wasn't this your job to remind me when I'm forgetting steps? Could have swore I asked you to, to help me out here. Anyway, so let's continue on, that should clean up exercise one and let's move on now to exercise number two and really all we need to do in exercise number two is to hook up the work from the previous lesson hook up all of the work that we did with a button click event in the about uh, user control so whenever the user clicks the purchase button we want to call the current app simulators request app purchase async method uh, it'll kick off the purchase process. The simulator will pop up a little window for us as developers so that we can test this. And there will be uh, several different error codes. We'll see that so that we can test various scenarios. But after we say, yeah, it was a, su a successful purchase, our app begins to listen for license changed events from the Windows Store, presumably, eventually. But uh, Again, those are carried out for us already. We implemented those when we copied the code for the app license data source. So we're, we should be good there. The only thing left to do now is to revisit the about user control and we'll need to wire up the click event for this button because a lot of the hard work of determining whether we're already licensed or not will come down to this binding of the is trial property using that static resource boolean divisibility uh, converter and this is trial is implemented in our app license data source which implements i notify property changed if anything changed about this class then it will fire off that change our about user control will be listening. It'll hide this button and it will update the license information in the text block above it, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and start working through the instructions here. Here, let's go here. And we wanna add this on purchase clicked event. All right, and so we'll need to implement this in the code behind. Let's go ahead and open that up. And there are two things we need to do there. We're gonna to need to add the using statement for the store. And then we're going to actually implement that on purchase button clicked event that we just added to our button a moment ago so that we can call the request app purchase async. Now notice we get a little green squiggly underneath it. It just gives us a warning. Because this call is not awaited, execution of the current method continues before the call is completed. And this is fine because we already have a listener in our app license data source listening for, these, for, the, uh, for the information to come down from the Windows Store. So we don't need to await this, okay? So uh, I think the next thing we're gonna do is actually run through a scenario where we test this and we'll just go to the about page, tap the purchase button, and then uh, when 
we see that little dialog from the Windows Store. We're going to say go ahead and say it's OK. And then we'll display the About page again and confirm that the Purchase button has disappeared. Great. So save everything and let's run this. And so we will go to the settings about and this time we're going to click the button. And here's that window store dialog. Again, we can choose which error code to return, whether OK or any of these exceptions like invalid arguments, fail, out of memory and so on. Let's go ahead and choose OK and click continue. And then we see nothing has really appreciably changed about our app. Things have been changing in the background, however. And so now the next time we come to the About page, we see that our app is no longer in trial. It's the full version, and it's valid until the end of time. Okay? All right, so, you know, once again, we're simply tying together all the work that we did in the previous lesson to enable and disable features in our app based on whether the user is using a trial or a full version of the app. This time, we're only just disabling a button. It's not showing it anymore. We showed how that was all wired up declaratively, so we didn't have to write a lot of code to make that happen. So we could use a similar type of check all over our, uh, all over our app in order to cripple the software as desired and possibly even notify the user of the benefits of using the full version of our app. So I'm going to leave that step up to your creativity and the business model that you've cooked up uh, for your particular app. So one thing you might be wondering, and I don't think that I discussed this, I didn't see it in the, uh, in the lab, is, all right, I've been saying you're going to use the current app simulator until you submit your app to the Windows Store. And you might be saying, okay, well, what am I going to replace it with? I've got to make a call to... Uh, to something to the Windows Store API, right? And so what you'll do, you'll see here, you must replace the current app simulator class with the current app class before you submit the app to the Windows Store. Apps that use the current app simulator, simulator will fail certification. All right, so what we'll do is just basically do um, a search and replace, or we can just, uh, you know, perform some sort of check if we're running locally at uh, in in design time then use the current app simulator if we're running live then use the current app object and you can see that it is hosting a number of properties and specifically the methods that we need like this request app purchase async or request product purchase async like we'll use in the next lesson uh, in order to duplicate the uh, the uh, functionality that we've been working on here in these exercises. All right, so the next lesson is our last uh, step inside of the labs, and it shows us one more way to interact with the Windows Store API and monetize our apps. So we'll see you there. Thank you. Mm -hmm.